It's not one of my proudest moments, but I mean, I, I, I'm glad we went through it because had we not gone through there, we wouldn't be able to speak uh, to the difference as much as we can. You know? I was vegan for two years and then I was a vegetarian for three years after that. So a total of five, five years. And I think anytime you identify yourself and put yourself in a box, then trouble comes your way. I started developing kidney stones. I was having kidney stones on a regular basis. My dad had them, so I just figured, okay, this is what happens when you turn 40. You know, you I often hear like people say, yeah, I, I want to lose like 10 pounds, or 15 no, I'm just thinking to myself. Like, so I always say that being unhealthy is the most selfish thing that we can do because we're robbing ourselves and our friends and family of our true version. Hey Keto Camper, Ben Azadi here, best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp. Our mission here at Keto Camp is to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. I'm excited and grateful you chose play on this podcast. Welcome. You're going to love today's interview all about the carnivore diet. You're going to be blown away by the stories that will be shared today about what carnivore, just eating nothing but animal foods, did and can do for you when it comes to autoimmune disease, better skin complexion, weight loss, and much, much more, which we'll get into. Shortly, I'm going to be interviewing Chrissy and Dwayne Schofield, and they're going to share their journey into carnivore and what it did to transform their health. And this episode is going to inspire you to give carnivore a shot if you haven't done so already. So grab your pen and paper, and let's get right into this interview with Chrissy and Dwayne. Hey, you two. Hey, how you Hi. doing? I'm doing outstanding. How are you two doing today? We are outstanding as well. It was actually a really, really warm day. Actually, I think I got some vitamin D today. We're in Canada, <laughs> as you know, so yeah, those days we are kind of number. When we, yeah, when we can. So yeah, I yeah. Off today, trying to get what I could. So yeah, that's awesome. I got some vitamin D too. I was up on my rooftop today. I did a a light workout. I had pulled my back a few days ago, so I, I couldn't walk for two days. Actually, today was the first mm -hmm. day. And I was able to do some activity. I did a light workout on the rooftop, but I'm in Miami and it's pretty much sunny here every day. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I could no. take advantage of that any day. So you two have incredible stories that I'm aware of, but I don't think my audience, most of my audience are not aware of. And I'd love for you both to share. We'll start with Chrissy to share your backstory on some of your struggles with health and then how you got into carnivore and then Dwayne could pick it up uh, right from there. So mm -hmm. go ahead, Chrissy. Uh, I'd love to hear about that. Sure. I'll try not to make it too long. Um, so just so everybody knows, uh, I, I do have a background in health. I'm, I was actually, I'm formerly a dietitian. Um, so, you know, health and nutrition was always something that I was interested in. Um, you know, I followed the quote unquote balanced diet for years, probably ever since I was a teenager. Um, you know, I worked as a lifeguard, so really always interested in, in health. And I actually became a personal trainer as well. Um, so I guess it would have been, I can't remember the year right now anymore, but, uh, I discovered, I transitioned to the vegan diet, um, after I'd finished school, uh, and it was kind of just sort of, um, as a result of, of like a lot of people, uh, finding some Netflix documentaries and, um, kind of getting sucked in by, by those or, or I guess, you know, scared into believing that this was the best thing, um, choice for, for my health at the time. And, um, you know, with new, my, my studies, it had actually, um, we were, they were pushing towards more plant-based diet. So, uh, I, I thought that it was the best thing for best thing for my health. So I, I became a vegan and actually it was actually Dwayne actually <laughs> became a vegan first, which is the opposite um, of what you're doing now, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, it's not one of my proudest moments, but I mean, I, I, I'm glad we went through it because had we not gone through there, we wouldn't be able to speak uh, to the difference as much as we can, you know? So it was yeah. as much as it wasn't the best Thing we ever did um for how long were you vegans um so Dwayne lasted six yeah not weeks? super long for me <laughs> six weeks yeah that's not too long yeah. yeah he didn't like it he didn't like it I was raw vegan at first so I mean oh wow you know he didn't really like it not having cold food all the time but I was vegan for two years and then I was a vegetarian for three years after that so a total of five five years um did you notice at the beginning that you felt better like the first few weeks or months did you feel better in the beginning yeah, 
That's my first year. I did feel better. The first year, um, okay. First year. I mean, I can't really exactly, you know, remember but when it when it was. But we were also coming from, you know, a virt- basically a standard American diet too, mm. you know. So it's not like we were. You know, we weren't really health fanatics at that time when we, you know, it was another one of those times where we were like, okay, we need to get our health under control here. And that seemed like a really great way to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but we, we both didn't have a really a lot of issues at the time. It's just maybe we, you know, put a little bit away and we thought, okay, let's, let's turn things around and, oh, well, this seems like this is the way to do it. Yeah. So, well, I had actually competed in fitness competitions for several years before this too. So, but the way of doing it back then was you just cut out calories. You did a ton of cardio. That was really it. So, um, I I probably had put on some weight after that because a lot of competitors do that. They fluctuate with, with weight, uh, up and down. Um, so yeah, I did feel better in the first place. Um, but who knows, you know, the veganism is a fasting mimicking diet. So a lot of people feel great with fast, you know, fasting is, is great for a lot of things, you know, and to- autophagy and things like that. So who knows, it could have been something in that um, case. But I mean, like Dwayne said, I didn't really have many health conditions before I was, I was healthy um, other than, you know, maybe having a little weight that I wanted to lose. Um, but it was, and because I was coaching uh, clients and myself and I wanted to compete uh, I want to do it as a as a vegan. So it was sort of like I was determined <laughs> to to compete to show that you didn't need to eat very much protein, as a lot of plants vegans. powered. Exactly. So I was very determined to do that. You know, I took a course in um, plant uh, based nutrition, and so I was really like you know set out to to prove that I could that I could do it as a vegan. Um, but I guess it was probably after my first year that my health started to really decline. Um, you know, I started to notice that I was tired all the time. Um, I developed interstitial cystitis, a chronic bladder condition. Um, uh, and then that's sort of when my pain started fibromyalgia and it really kind of started in my neck, um, neck and shoulders. And, you know, before long, it was just full blown all of my joints to the point that I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. Um, I had developed, started developing eczema. So I never had issues with my skin. Uh, you know, my scalp is sort of where it started first and, and then, um, other places. Um, I started getting uh, nutritional deficiencies. So, um, my vitamin D was extremely low. My iron was very low and I was supplementing with, um, B12 and I was taking, you know, a, a multivitamin, a vegan multivitamin. Um, but that just still didn't seem to be working. Did you stop all of your training at this point? Yeah, well, not at that point, but it was probably within sometime within my second year that I felt like because of the fibromyalgia, I just did not, I couldn't do what I, like I loved working out and I couldn't do what I used to be able to do. So, um, yeah, so because of the pain and because I was just so tired and I developed some other things, um, hormonal, um, issues as well. Um, and, uh, the, brain fog as well. So, um, you know, definitely. And then within that, after that, that second year was sort of when I was like, okay, well, I need to do something about this. I was still determined. I wanted to make the vegan diet work because I thought it was the best thing for my health and for, you know, the environment and for the world. Yeah. (laughs) Because it became about more than just my health afterwards, you know, as it does with most vegans. Um, so I started to see a naturopath and she was actually a vegan herself. So I wanted to go to somebody that I felt was an expert in that. And, uh, she put me on a couple supplements. Eventually though, she said, you should, maybe you should start adding some animal foods back in your diet. And I really didn't want to, but I did reluctantly. And so I started off with eggs. I did that for a year. Um, because at this point my iron was, was, was very low. And, uh, then I added back in fish and I did that for another year. And then, um, I had back dairy as well. Cause I, I, I had some issues. I knew I had some issues with dairy before. So I really kind of resulted as that as sort of the last thing while still, you know, being a, a vegetarian. When you added, the, when you added in the eggs, did you immediately feel a difference? I did. Yeah. I did feel like energy, energy wise, I did feel, feel better, but I still definitely did not feel as good as, as I do today. 
So there was still something that I was eating in there that mm -hmm. was causing, you know, my inflammation. And Which we'll get to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so kind of how it all stopped was um, one night, actually, Dwayne was cooking, it was in the summertime, cooking uh, burgers. And up to this point, I hadn't, I really didn't crave meat, even though before I was a vegan, my favorite food was steak still is um but at which, that which time, type which kind of cut of steak oh prime rib for prime sure 100 mm. yeah <laughs> um but uh i during that time when i was a vegan vegetarian i i really had grossed myself out because of it because i was thinking obviously of the animals and some other things that i had told myself about meat um so i didn't crave it up until that point like you could cook bacon and i wouldn't it wouldn't bother me at all i didn't want to have it so, but that night that he was cooking the the burger, I just had this overwhelming feeling that I needed to eat one. And I didn't even really like burgers that much. Like it wasn't my meat of choice before this. But Dwayne was like, what? Yeah, it, it was quite shocking. I was like, man? you know, these are beef burgers, right? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. But that, at that point, as I, as I was saying it, I was like, don't, you know, like, don't, don't try to stop her, you know, like. Right, want, yeah. No, because it, it, if anyone, you know, tries to eat a, completely different diet in one household it, it's difficult so you know i was mm -hmm. i was ready for her to come back to eating meat just because it you know it makes life choosing restaurants easier going out and things like mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. i forced him to eat a lot of vegetarian foods yeah so. i mean I, you know like yeah so we went a lot of vegetarian restaurants or vegan restaurants during that time and so I, you know so when she was ready to come back to meat i was not going to complain you know? mm -hmm. right you're like oh yes thank god <laughs> <laughs> So your body was craving the the red meat. I mean, you exactly. had this innate intelligence that wanted the actual meat. So you feasted that night on meat. Yes. Yeah. And it was amazing. And I had so much energy that night that I couldn't sleep. So, and no digestive issues. Like some people um, approach us now, you know, wondering because they're thinking about adding meat back in. I had mm -hmm. no issues digestion wise. So yeah, I felt amazing. So I, I figured, okay, my body is telling me something. I'm obviously missing something. My iron's low, so I'm craving this this meat. And I had tried other things, by the way, like in terms of I was supplementing. And so, but um, so I added the meat back in. And before long, my iron, I had, didn't have to take supplements anymore. And my iron had, had balanced out. So um, yeah, so it was, it was a, you know, definitely a realization that, okay, like, I did everything right. I, I, it's not like I ate, you know, vegan junk foods. I did eat a, a balanced, like whole food, you know, vegan diet. I had the knowledge to know what to do properly. Um, I took the course, you know, I saw people, but it didn't work for me. So, you know, and, but of course a vegan would say you didn't do it right. Right. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know it's a, it's a great share because like you said, Dwayne, you've been there. I mean, you only did six weeks, but she was there for over two years, but you both did it. Uh, my story is very similar. I was a vegan for a year and a half after uh, reading the China study back in 2012 yeah. <laughs> before I knew how to understand studies. It's not even a study. It's just a whole bunch of uh, survey studies and, and mm -hmm. correlations, but not causations. But anyways, I was a vegan for a year and a half and my health also declined, but I put myself in that box. And I think anytime you identify yourself and put yourself in a box, then trouble comes your way. So I, I love that you did it. I love that you transitioned away from it. And I also broke my vegan diet with eggs as well. I didn't do it for a whole year. I did it for one week and then I started to add other foods. But that's what I did. I went from veganism to the keto lifestyle back in 2013. So, um, okay, interesting. So we'll get to how you discovered carnivore. Um, before we do, I want to hear Dwayne's story. But was there anything that you left out that you wanted to share in there, Chrissy? No, I okay. I think so. All right. So what about you, Dwayne? What's your backstory? Yeah. So I, um, I was an athlete uh, originally, you know, in my, in my twenties and up and, uh, throughout, uh, and then I coached and so, so athletics was, you know, part of my life. And so therefore, you know, I was able probably to maintain a decent body physique with, you know, diet didn't really factor that much because I was, I was, you know, so active, but as you get older and you're not, doing these things anymore, then, you know, if you're not eating a good diet, they really catch up to you. So, um, I started, you know, I gained a lot of weight. I was, um, 218 pounds. And for reference, I'm like around, you know, I stay around 150, 155 now, you know, so, so, uh, um, I also, but from birth, I did have a number of issues, you know, so as a basically, well, I was from the time I was weaned, I got I developed the triad, they call it the, I had asthma, allergies, and eczema. 
Hmm. And so as a kid, I was on a um, ventilator, not the vent, you know, the, the, you know, the okay. just, a, just a mask, you know, the, right. Yeah. Um, and I was on, um, um, you know, asthma medication all growing up uh, all my life until, you know, in my thirties, forties, uh, still having to keep those prescriptions going. I was, um, I was on, um, taking, uh, what is it? The, uh, you know, um, any histamines like daily for allergies and the eczema, it was so bad that it was just, it was just kind of bloody and raw and it just seemed to get worse as I was getting older. So, um, my, my two worst spots were on the backs of my legs and just behind my knees and they were raw and they were kind of unsightly embarrassing. You know, when you're sitting around a pool and walking around, you, you have these two, th- you know, you didn't want to be in the water because people thought people would be like, Oh, like that's gross. He's in the water. You know, so <laughs> those were really embarrassing. And I had tried a number of different things to, uh, fix the eczema. I was told, you know, Oh, it's probably dairy. So I stopped eating dairy. And that didn't do anything. Oh, it's probably, you know, um, you know, junk food, cut out junk food. And there was a number of different things that I would go on for a while. And none of those things um, had any bearing on it. They would, it would, it would just be, it was as it was. And so everything kind of came to a, a culmination. I was 41. I was super out of shape. I was, uh, um, my eczema was worse than it's ever been. It, you know, went from just being on my legs to my, I was getting new spots on my face right here and my nose on either side was always raw. And, and, um, then I started getting, um, psoriasis or whatever on my scalp. Um, then, um, and I started developing kidney stones. I was having kidney stones on a regular basis. Um, my dad had them. So I just figured, okay, this is what happens when you turn 40, you know, you just have these kidney stones, but I started having them so often that I ended up in the hospital having some of the room removed and it was almost like every other month I would have another kidney stone. So this was like not sustainable. Um, They were happening like on vacations and things like that and really inopportune time. I had heartburn that was really, really bad that would, you know, if anyone has ever had really, really bad heartburn, you can, you know, you get these bad chest pains and you go to the hospital and they, you know, they, all of a sudden, you know, assume the worst. And so that happened a couple of times and again on vacation. Wow. And, um, Chrissy's often better at remembering some of my, uh, some of my things than I am, but <laughs> you uh, probably intentionally I forget it. On well, per- yeah, I mean, on it's purpose. Not, like it's been two years now of like fe- almost two years now of feeling, you know, so good at, at you, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, like that used to be in my life. Actually, you know, another thing that, you know, I, and this is, you know, it's not the most pleasant, but I had IBS tr- tremendously bad. It's the point where, I had to really, you know, I, I enjoy like outdoor activities, like, you know, ATVing in the woods and snowmobiling in, in the, in the back country and skiing in back country, all these things. I had to pr- always carry toilet paper on any time I went anywhere because I just never knew when I was just going to, like it would hit and it would be like, no, nope, now, now's the time, you know, not like, okay, well, um, next, next, uh, turn off, I'm going to get off and use the bathroom. No, it was just, oh man, it's coming now, you know? And, and that was, that was for years. And it was like, I thought that was normal life, you know, like wow. I knew it was like, yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah knew, for both of you, extreme. that sucks. Yeah. I knew it was extreme, but I still thought this was, um, just the way my life was just cause it'd been that way so long, you know? So there was all these things I had, you know, that I just thought were power for the course. Like, you know, this is just it. And, and, and as you get older, we all get worse, right? That's, you know, that we get old and die. So all these issues uh, were getting worse. And, but that seemed to be, what you know it's happened to everybody you know and and looking around the room at the at the hockey rink you know at the at the in the in the dressing room you know i didn't feel overweight i didn't i didn't like my body physique but i didn't feel that it was you know i was out of place just because you know most of everyone else was you know had extra weight on so you know there was not a lot of like because of the people around you are so sick and have so many issues that you don't feel that you're that sick and have issues, even though like saying, looking back on it now, I'm just like, how the heck did I live that way? Yeah, but totally. When everyone, when everyone's got, you know, like all these other issues and people your age are all going through these same things, then it just seems like par for the course. So it wasn't until, you know, I hit rock bottom in, you know, it was January of, um, 2018. Yeah. 
And um, no, 19. No, 18. Because this bill was this this year will be two years. So, um, my um, my dad has you know had has cancer, and so that was on my mind, thinking like, oh, you know, like I gotta, you know, maybe I should start to clean things up a bit. I don't want to end up like that. And then I'm on a snowmobile trip up in the woods in the in the Highlands, and this is something that I absolutely love doing. I I spent a lot of money doing it, and and it's you know kind of revolved my world around it for many years. And I get stuck in a, in a drift and I couldn't get out because I wasn't in good enough shape to, to, you know, I was huffing and puffing so badly. And it just hit me. I'm like, if I'm not in good enough shape to do the things I want to do at, at 40, well, like, what am I, what's my life going to be at 50? Mm-hmm. What's my life going to be at 60? And so, you know, like I, you envision that you're going to keep doing fun things for the rest of your life. But I mean, if I'm in, if I'm in early forties and I'm already getting to the point where uh, my in, my health issues are greatly affecting my standard of living. You know, I'm not able to do things I want to do. So I went back to the cottage that night and, you know, oat comes, oat comes the rum and Cokes and in goes the delicio pizza into the fridge, which is basically the way we would eat all and drink on these trips. And I'm just looking at this slice of pizza and I'm like, this is why I feel the way I feel, you know, this is like, I'm just looking at it and I was like, this is all going to change. So I went back home, told Chrissy that, look, you know, I'm, 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 it's a good time. It's January, it's early January. Let's, let's make some changes. I'm cutting all this stuff out of my, I'm going to, I'm not going to drink for the next couple of months. I'm not going to eat anything like this. And I'm going to dive into, and at the time I knew that keto would be effective. So I, for losing weight. And at the time, my main objective was to lose some weight. And I knew that my hormones were off. I, mean, I knew that I, because way I was gaining my weight, I, you know, I had man boobs and a, w- a lot of weight around my belly. So I knew that, you know, my my testosterone's low, my estrogen's probably high. So I'm gonna start to dive in and do some research on how to get my hormones balanced. And of course, you know, I'm in, I'm starting to listen to a bunch of YouTube videos and podcasts on the keto space, and that's helping me a lot. I'm, I'm, you know, the first, you know, um, you know, I had the the, the similar results that many do, you know, in the first week, you, you lose seven or eight pounds. So I'm like, okay, this is great. This is awesome. You know, week two, more pounds, week three, you know, so basically I did keto for about uh, a month and a half. And, you know, I was losing, like, I think I'd lost in a month and a half. I think I'd lost, you know, close to 20 pounds. Wow. That's great. And um, yeah, so that the weight was coming off, but I still, you know, my, my eczema was still there my um as reflex was still there maybe not as bad but it was there my um my asthma was still having to take puffers and things like that and my food cravings were still there so i was i was wrestling with it a little more than i wanted to be you know the fortunately it was a great time of year to be doing it because our social life had you know january your social life starts to turn down a little bit you're not seeing as many people so i wasn't in as many you know so thinking back if i would have tried to try it that method at a different time, I might not have had the success, but because I, we were able to like, just kind of, you know, we were kind of hibernating basically. And I, I wasn't around a lot of foods that would have tempted me in a lot of, and you know, there wasn't a lot around a lot of drinking or anything. So I was able to, st- you know, and, and I was seeing the results. So I was, I was, and that's one thing I love about keto is that you do see results quickly and it helps motivate you. So I wasn't really working out at first because I was just so out of shape and it's not, feeling good, but I did start to work out, but all the podcasts I was listening and all the YouTube videos I was watching, they were, they were helping me a great deal. I mean, I owe all of, all of our health turnarounds to, you know, to this medium and like the podcasts, like you have here yourself. And, you know, you were one that I listened to a great deal and there's so many others that, you know, I, I was, I was listening to about six hours a day of podcasts. <laughs> wow. Um, well, you know, with the, with the earbud in, unfortunately I do a work that I can, I don't necessarily have to be talking to people all the time. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of it's just email, a lot of it's online, a lot of, you know, so, or, or I'm driving. So we, we cover a large territory you know, with our other work. And so it's a lot of driving. So, you know, consuming it'll easily six, pod, six hours of podcast a day. And I went to the premium version of YouTube so I could just listen to YouTube videos <laughs> without having to have any of the ads and they could, you could lock your phone and continue to listen to it. And so I was consuming a ton of information and it was helping. But what I was see- hearing this, this carnivore thing kept popping up. And as, and at first, like everyone, I completely dismissed it as ridiculous um, because, you know, married to a dietitian and <laughs> she always made sure that like, oh, you know, cause even now that we were doing keto, 
you know, she made damn sure that there was always some green along with what everything else we were eating, you know, and to the point where we're even having green smoothies. And, you know, so we were doing the keto of that, with that style keto, like meat, yes, but always had to have the green smoothie, the, the, um, the green on the side of the plate and everything else. So I was, so when, you know, the, this talk of carnivore came up, I, you know, I immediately kind of dismissed it, but you know, it was, it was, it was unavoidable. Like the more I was listening the more, you know, it just kept coming up more and coming more. And I, and I, so I was like, you know what, this is, this is really interesting. You know, so I started going down that rabbit hole even further discovered, you know, that people had been doing this for, this wasn't, even though I just heard of it, you know, th there would have been people that eating this way for years and, and, you know, either a few years at that point, or in, and in some cases, 10 years and things. So I was like, okay, you know, what's the harm? I'm going to do it. I come home and tell her, she tells me I'm crazy, of course. <laughs> Um, but she also told me I was crazy when I said we should go vegan. So you know, I was just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, you know. um, I should have listened to you that time, but this time I'm not listening to you. Um, so I did it and um, she wasn't going to do it along with me, you know, but I guess, so, you know, mealtime did get a lot easier. So I'm just eating my steak and, you know, I'm just not eating the greens on the side. And then, but it, it became so much more than that. Like I was avoiding so many things, you know, when I think one of the powers of, of our diet is you know there's it's virtually impossible to get seed oils in in your diet it's virtually impossible to get oxalates in in forms you know you're you're not getting um sugar from all these hidden sources you know there's you know the keto there was so many ways of getting um you know there was so many keto approved foods that would still allow you to get seed oils in still allow you to get you know much more carbs than you thought you were getting in um and forms of sugar that you didn't even realize were there and you know and they were always it was always just enough carbs in my diet that kept me wanting carbs you know so mm -hmm. the food cravings you know and we were eating the keto forms of things you know so when you're eating a keto um treat well it's still signaling your body that this treat is good and that you know, the whole treat thing is a thing that, you know, you, you want more treats and you, you know, you feel that when something happens and good, you deserve a treat and, you know, it perpetuated that. But with carnivore, I, I just was eating meat and it was super simple. Um, I was satisfied and all in it was within a week, my skin on back of my legs was like, it, it didn't, you know, the eczema didn't go away, but the, the rawness was gone. So I, if anyone's had eczema for a really long time, like decades, you get this elephant skin the skin gets to be super thick in that area from all the scarring and i just figured okay well this is fantastic it's not raw anymore i'll still always have this thick ugly elephant skin but you know at least i'm not raw but as i kept going the skin went back to totally normal and then the, the only difference was how that, long how long did it take um you know and, and looking back i wish i would have done photos to document it all like mm -hmm. you know but it, it was just you know i was just in amazement and like oh i was gonna keep going let's see what happens but i didn't document it well enough and i didn't even realize at the time how you know that the timeline i'm really bad with timelines anyway but um <laughs> chris is agreeing <laughs> but was it weeks it was, was it months yeah it was in it was weeks that okay. uh, that it was virtually you know and, and the only thing i was left with was the skin was freckly in that area so it was just uh the pigment was different but the skin was felt smooth and soft. Like it was like new skin, you know, like new, it was like softer than the rest of my skin. It was like new baby skin. And, but it the pigment was different. It was really fleck, freckly and, and a little darker in that area. And I thought, Oh, well, this is great. I'm happy with this, you know? And then it, but like I said, it just kept going and going. And eventually, you know, now it's, it's, it's still slightly different color, but you have to really look to see the line, you know, and I still show people this because I, I like to kind of having that line there because I can show people like this is how big the patch was on each leg. But, you know, you can feel the skin down. It's as smooth as anything. So so that went away. The asthma puffers were never needed basically within three or four days. You know, that didn't need the asthma puffers. Wow. Um, the allergy medication, I didn't need any. I haven't for any and nothing. Just hasn't uh, haven't had any allergy issues. Um, the heartburn went away. So, you know, for some people, they can get heartburn when they go on carnivore because of the due to a low stomach acid issue. Uh, fortunately, that didn't happen to me. But for me, I had it before and it went away on carnivore. Um, my um, kidney stones were completely gone. I, I haven't had one since. 
um, that my mood improved a great deal. So, and, you know, so there were so many things that were starting to happen that weren't even, you know, weren't, weren't even things that I was trying to go for, you know, I mean, I was just happy that the weight was falling off, that eczema was gone, you know, the, the asthma, I was, I was happy with that. It didn't affect me that bad because the medication worked, but I always knew that the medication wasn't great for me. So, and it was expensive. And so I was, you know, I was happy to get rid of that. But thing, the changes that, you know, I just wasn't anticipating was, you know, the mood change, you know, being able to handle stress so much more easily, you know, mm -hmm. things that would have like situations would come up and, and either Chris, would remind me, or sometimes I'd remind myself like, wow, if that would have happened, several months ago or, you know, you know, a year ago, I would have dealt with it so differently. You know, we, we, ha we live on a lake and we have a huge amount of people that come to our house for two weeks in the summer, kids and adults, and, you know, it's anywhere from 14, 17 people staying here for two weeks. And in previous years, that was, I mean, I love it, but stressful, you know, you have all this going on and preparing the meals every day and all this stuff. And they, it was very stressful this, this summer or just, not stressful, you know, just like, Oh, easy going. And, you know, so my mood greatly improved. Um, I did lose 70 pounds overall. So that's, wow. Uh, that was, you know, that was, that was in, um, seven months that I lost the 70 pounds and I just kind of stayed at that. Didn't lose any more. Well, I, I, I continued to change my body composition so I couldn't really record anymore. Like that's the difference I saw on the scale, but I've been, I know I lost more body fat than that. And, and again, and people would say, like, I don't even believe you had 70 pounds to lose, but that's because a lot of the fat that we have to lose and that we need to lose is internal. You know, you, you, there's only so much fat right. you carry around, you know, as adipose tissue, but we have a lot of visual fat that if you've been eating, you know, the crap diet that I was eating, you know, you got, you got a lot of fat around your liver, you got a lot of fat, you know, internal and fat. That's and that's the most dangerous the, fat. Exactly. And that's the most dangerous. So people... You know, I, I don't, I don't, I often hear like people say, yeah, I, I want to lose like 10 pounds. I want to lose 50, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, like, it's a good start. That's a great start. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> you do that and that's good, you know, but knowing full well, you know, I, the, the pounds just kept coming off me and kept coming off me and kept coming off me, even though my look, it was actually the, you know, the love handles, which was my, you know, my nemesis that I was just like working hard to get rid of. I mean, they were a long time getting off in the process. You know, there was a ton of 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 weight that the scale was saying that I was losing be well before I lost the my belly and lost my love handles you know so all that fat that was I was losing a lot of it was stuff that people didn't see but that's the stuff that they're talking about when they were like yeah I want to lose 15 10 15 pounds or 10 pounds you know it's it's the stuff that they see but the stuff that's inside them which like you said is the stuff that they need to get rid of you know that they're not even oftentimes including so that's you know when when I show you know, people the before and after, you know, and, and, and I don't even know if that before picture is, 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 is good as I could have. It's just, when you are overweight, you do a really great job of avoiding the camera at all costs. So, oh, totally. I get that. Know. Yeah. So it, it was a, like, you know, that picture I had to get from a friend who was here, you know, that just snapped that and had it on their phone and I wasn't able to delete it because had it, you know, <laughs> had it been on Chrissy's phone or whatever, you know, it would have been can gone, you, you know, can, so. Can you send it to me so I could show it here on the YouTube video yeah. for B-roll? Yeah, not right now, but yeah. what, later yeah. on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, so the, the, it was, it was hard to find a photo of, to, to show a real proper before and after because, you know, I just, like I say, avoided, and, and you don't know how many things you were avoiding altogether when you're not feeling good in all the way, you know, like there's so many invitations, so many pool parties so many you know you're just like no you know i think i'm good i'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay you know and and all of a sudden you when you when you feel good about yourself and you you feel you look good you are way more open and to doing whatever's going on and you're like yeah sure mm -hmm. let's, let's go let's you know so you live a better lifestyle just mentally um when you when you feel good but let alone actually getting all these health issues you know erased. And, um, so that's why, you know, I have to keep a, a running list of the, the, these problems because they're so far from my mind now, because it's just yeah. the life that we live now, you know, like the work, you know, I it got, went from a point of, you know, we've always had a gym in our house, but to go, you know, there was zero motivation to go use it, you know, and you flip that to a, to a, that you, if you don't use it every day, then you, you're kind of, you know, you've, 
like it, the, the problem became actually taking rest days, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you had the opposite this, problem. Now. <laughs> the opposite problem, just like, oh, you really, I really shouldn't lift weights every single day. And, and you know, try, you know, and I got an injury this summer and uh, I've been trying to, you know, get that worked on and trying to, you know, avoid certain things. And it's, it's really hard to do because you're just, your energy level is high. Yeah. You want to work out, you know, and um, so to try to slow down is actually, you know, as hard as it was for you to actually do something before. So, and you know what, you're right, because when you're, when you're healthy, you, you become your, your truest version of yourself, your personality shines, like you said, you start doing more things. And the opposite is true as well. When you're not healthy, then not only are you robbing yourself of your true personality, but then those around you, your wife, your family, you have the group that comes over, they don't get your full version of yourself because you're stressed out, you're frustrated, you don't have the energy. So I always say that being unhealthy is the most selfish thing that we can do because we're robbing ourselves and our friends and family of our true version. So that's a perfect example right there because now your true version of yourself, your personality is shining and a lot of those problems you had, they're pretty much gone because you're not even thinking about them anymore. And there were so many when you were going through them, you don't even realize, you didn't even realize that you had all those problems until they're gone and now they're kind of disappearing from your life. So it's super cool share right there. Yeah, no, thanks. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's been an amazing journey and yeah, like, I mean, we're not anti plant by any man, any matter. Um, I think that those who are, you know, healthy and just like, you know, I'm not anti sugar either. I think if you have a healthy metabolism and you are metabolically healthy, then, you know, sugar can be completely okay for you, you know, but unfortunately majority of us aren't, you know, we're not, you know, in that position. So, I feel, you know, it, for, for someone to say that, you know, a, a little bit of sugar is okay here and there. Well, that, that, that ultimately depends on where you are, you know, and if you are diabetic, then yeah, it's going to take probably pulling that sugar out altogether to get to where you need to be. And if you're not healthy, if you have autoimmunity, uh, autoimmune issues, then yeah, it's going to take pulling those plants out, maybe and all that plant material to kind of get to where you need to be. So it doesn't mean it's forever. It doesn't mean that um, you'll never eat plants again. It doesn't mean you'll never eat sugar again. But depending where you are, you need to go. Um, you know, if, uh, Dr. Barry often talks about it too. You know, he he got to, you know, paleo took him so far, and he felt better, but he didn't feel right yet. And, you know, and then he went keto, and it got better, but he wasn't quite there yet. And then you know, it took carnivore for him to finally get to where his issues all relieved. And that's exactly the way it was for, for us is that, you know, we did feel better on keto, but it didn't take everything away. We still had several of the symptoms, we, you know, we, we lost weight, but we still had uh, our autoimmune issues. And it wasn't until we took all the plants away. And, and I couldn't tell you to this day, which of these plants were the ones doing it, but it, regardless, something was, and without them, we were able to heal. And um, could we start eating plants again today? Yeah, and very well likely we could. Um, I, we, there has been a number of things that we have had and tried in and added in, but we've also at the point where we enjoy our lifestyle so much now that I, I, you know, as soon as this podcast is over, the, you know, the, the the charcoal grill gets fired up and there'll be a prime rib steak going on there, and nice. that's our supper every night. For lunch, it's super simple. We have a can of sardines, ground beef, and um, nice. eggs, and you know, liver. I'm trying different. I'm doing. I'm doing an experiment right now with liver because we were eating fresh liver um, all the time, and that is definitely why I I recommend it. But there is people that often come to me in when, when I'm talking to them, and they're just like, I just can't do the liver thing, you know. So I was like, okay. So I'm doing. I do, I'm doing 30 days of a desiccated. Um, uh, liver um, for just to see the difference, you know, so I, cause mm. I, I would often tell them, well, if you can't do liver, just do the desiccated. And so th I'm doing that right now. I started, I guess I'm a week and a half in or two weeks in. And um, so I'm doing that just for 30 days. And so I'm not eating any normal liver. I'm doing that to see if I, if I feel any different from it. But I'm fortunately, we, we, we didn't enjoy liver either in the, the start, but we, we really like it now. Um, and we do it, you know, we, before I was doing this experiment, we were doing it two to three times a week, but the sardines I try to do every day. We've noticed a big difference in our skin from eating the sardines daily. Mm -hmm. Um, and the steak, um, we have, you know, we're, we're fortunate to live somewhere we can get, um, 
uh, grass-fed steaks just down the road at a great price. And we, um, we eat a lot of ground beef and eggs mixed together because it's just super simple. We can cook up the ground beef. Chrissy usually cooks up like four or five pounds at a time. Mm-hmm. And we just heat it up in the cast iron with some eggs for lunch. And then I say, like I say, the, the, the sardines. And it's just super simple. Like you know, and, and after what almost two years now, still not sick of any of those foods and, yeah, and we've eaten other things too you know yeah. like yeah in the beginning we were much more bacon thing and you know yeah. chicken wings and stuff like that but that's what just what we like so yeah, yeah. In the beginning, we thought that you know like oh okay we're gonna do this carnivore thing but we've got to eat all kinds of meat to, for the variety right but as time went on we realized we just liked it more just keeping it super simple like we, we both feel the best on beef um, not that we, you know, we'll both eat bacon for sure, but we, we primarily eat beef and that's where we feel the most best. Our digestion is super clean. It's, it's super, you know, we, you know, flat stomach all the time. And the, but like say adding in the sardines was, we again, got an, another level. We feel we reached another level and that was with, you know, skin. Well, so I want to interject because what you're you're doing it the right way. You're having enough fat, you're having enough protein, you're having a good ratio, but you're also doing the organ meat, which is which is key because that helps balance out a lot of the amino acids. If if you were just doing carnivore, eating a whole bunch of muscle meat every single day, you would not both of you would not be getting the benefits that you're getting. But you're having uh, plenty of fat and a lot of the vitamins and minerals that animals eat from plants are stored in their fat. And when you eat these fattier cuts, that's how we're getting the vitamins and the minerals, the vitamin C and everything that people say, how are you getting that on carnivore? We're eating fatty protein and you're eating healthy grass fed, grass finished. So there is a right way to do this. And I'm curious, um, Chrissy, how did Chrissy get on board with the carnivore? Cause at first she was not. So at what point no. did, did you, <laughs> well, did you say staying, Chrissy? Staying you were... is believing that was basically what <laughs> it's happened. true. Yeah. So um, yeah, he, he did it for probably, I think it three months and uh, the eczema thing was huge because he had tried, like he said, everything. And, you know, they, they were huge. They were like, you know, baseball bat size. Um, so when that went away, you know, I knew like that cause he had tried so many things. So there was obviously something to this. Um, and I had done other elimination diets before I'd probably done the two or th- at least two, maybe three elimination diets before this. And so Dwayne. Hey, I want to pause this interview with Chrissy and Dwayne real quick, just to say thank you so much for watching this interview. Please smash that thumbs up button here on YouTube. So YouTube knows you like this interview. And if you're brand new to the channel, hit the subscribe button with that bell. So you're notified when we release a brand new video or when we go live. All right, let's get back to this interview with Christy and Dwayne. Would love and lovingly send me um, you know, different podcasts and, and videos that he thought that I would um, that would speak to me in terms of, of carnivore. And, you know, he approached, he, he talked to me about uh, Michaela Peterson and how she had basically done it as an elimination diet and how it was the most elimin- extreme elimination diet that you could do. And I had done several, so I knew the benefits of an elimination diet. So I said, you know what? what's one month, it's not going to kill me to have to not have, you know, that little bit of green stuff on the side of my plate, even though I loved vegetables. You know, um, a lot of people say I, I can't not have my vegetables. I loved them too. Um, but I figured, okay, I cannot knock it until I've tried it. So I'm going to commit to it for a month. But with my intentions in that time was, okay, I'm going to do it as a month as elimination diet. I'm going to cut everything out. I'm going to do all beef, eventually add things back. But I felt so good after that first month, like literally, you know, within three months anyway, because it one month turned into three months because I just felt so good that I'd say 95% of my symptoms had gone away. So like fibromyalgia, which is wow. supposedly an incurable illness. Right. Um, you know, brain fog, the brain fog was one of the very first things that I noticed going away, which was amazing because... Honestly, I felt so stupid most days, you know, and I have eight years of university education and I felt like I couldn't have an on like a, a intelligent conversation with people, especially not, you know, past 3 p.m. Um, <laughs> so that was awesome. And then then I noticed the energy come back. So it did take a little bit for the the I, I did notice I noticed the inflammation like in my joints go away first. It was probably in the shoulder and the neck because that's what started that that took the longest 
um, to go away. And I still have, uh, I still am experimenting with a couple things. So, um, like Dwayne said, we are primarily beef. Uh, I find that omega too much omega six in my diet. So having too much pork, um, uh, you know, and chicken that definitely, uh, exaggerates my, my inflammation. So I, I'm a, you know, a, a, a farther step than, than Dwayne. I'm a little bit more sensitive. Um, but yeah, I, I did actually start to try to add things back after that three months and just, I just didn't feel as good. So I said, you know what, I'm just loving what I'm doing. I'm not craving for anything for the first time in my life. Cause I did, mm-hmm. like, you know, I loved my chocolate. I loved ice cream. I loved, you know, chips and so many things, but, and carbs, but I did not crave for, and it was just, why mess with something that's, that's working. And obviously that there was something in there that I was eating that was causing all this inflammation. So that Amazing. being said, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, that being said, I have, I did decide in July of this year to, to try and add a couple of things back just cause I, I'm just curious to see how I, how I feel. Um, and there, there's a couple of things I have been able to add back, but you know, still, I, I still feel like, again, I'm not missing anything. I'm just kind of adding it back. Just mainly, you know, if we get invited out to dinner at somebody's house, I want to know, okay, I'm not going to feel awful if I have this vegetable or whatever it is that they're having. Cause people think it's weird when they, when you get invited to their place and they can't just serve you. <laughs> oh, the no, carnivore really couple is coming over. We have to have steak. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, your results are telling. I mean, I know that you, you reached out to me initially, I think it was you, Dwayne, um, on Instagram where you said you're listening to the podcast, you know, you were giving me, you know, saying good job. And I was you know very thankful of that. And then you told me, you listened to my interview, my episode about my 40 days of carnivore. And then I said, you know, tell me a little bit more about your carnivore results. And you gave me this whole list, uh, eczema gone, asthma gone, allergies gone, <laughs> lost 70 pounds, number of kidney stones, and improved sleep, body composition, testosterone up, more energy, mental clarity, focus, uh, Chrissy's fibromyalgia is gone. I'm like, hey, let's do a podcast <laughs> because I want to I wanna share this information to, to inspire those who are curious about this. You know, it did gr- great for me. I did 40 days strict, level two to level three of carnivore and it inspired me so much to create a whole 30 day protocol in the keto camp Academy. And a lot of members are starting to do it and getting results. So I want to, I want to close this uh, awesome interview out by just answering a few questions here from the keto camp Academy members who are watching on the live stream. So let's just uh, go these, go go through these real quick. Um, Rosanna says no pork chops. Well, they said they don't do well or or Christy doesn't do well with more omega six and pork tends Mm -hmm. to have more omega six. So you can have pork shop, pork chops. It's it's about the balance, right? So as long as you're, you know, you you don't want to get that ratio too high of omega six. So, you know, like I said, we, we do have bacon. Um, we do enjoy bacon and, you know, I would not be opposed to changing it up one night and having a pork chop, but for us, we find, yeah, if we eat too much pork or chicken in one week and, 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 but like I say, we, one of the, one of the reasons we added in the sardines as a daily thing was to help bump up our Mm -hmm. omega three. So it's really the ratio, you know, you can have omega sixes, but if your omega sixes become too high beyond your omega threes, that's when, you know, inflammation can start in. But if you don't, but if you're an individual that doesn't have an issue with inflammation from that, you know, then it might not be an issue. Yeah, just... I think it totally depends on the person. And, right. And, you know, we actually, so I did start off with beef in the beginning, but then I did add back. I, I was eating basically anything that was, that was coming from an animal, then I did have it. But I and, just didn't feel as good. So it's, I think it kind of depends on the person. You can play around with and there's, that. There's a big caveat when it comes to pork too. So when I'm, we're generalizing in, when we're talking about pork, but the difference is that, you know, beef and lamb are ruminant animals. So they're, they're only eating grass. Whereas uh, a pig and a chicken are a single gastric like, like us humans. So they can be fed anything. So the, the problem with pork is that, you know, a lot of times they're fed restaurant scraps. That's kind of like one of the MOs that a lot of, um, pork farmers will use. They'll go right. around and pick up restaurant scraps and they'll feed them to the, so what, what are in restaurant scraps? Well, there's going to be a heck of a lot of seed oil in there from what they've cooked with. There's a lot of, you know, so it's, it's apparently, you know, in, in, in Hungary, cause I've listened to a lot of stuff from that, like the paleo Medicino and they do actually do a lot of pork, but the pork in Europe is 
not high in omega-6. So it's because they're raised totally differently. So it's just in North America, the pork that you generally get access to is much higher in omega-6 and that can be problematic. Yeah, definitely want to get a quality source, which is hard to get in, in America, but you can get it. Can. Um, recommended portion size, which uh, should I eat, says Echo. I'll, I'll share real quick. I think it's important to get enough protein on carnivore, which is not difficult to do, but 40 to 50 grams at, at each meal, I, I think works best for most people. But what are, what is your intended, what do you usually get portion size wise? Yeah, so our goal is always to prioritize protein. Um because we find the fat just kind of help, happens itself, but the protein we do prior to, to make sure. So for, for personally, for me, um, I try to get around um, around a pound, a, a gram per pound of body weight for me. So, so it's, you know, so both of us are around that. So I'm around 150 grams of protein a day um, at that level, um, very satiated. Um, and at this kind of, it's an easy target. And I find that the fat that comes along with my steaks helps a lot. We get our steaks untrimmed. So, um, cause we get them directly from the butcher. So they have more fat on them than your average steak would from the grocery store. Um, so we don't feel we have, we don't have to add a lot of fat. Some nights I just feel like putting some butter on my steak and some nights I don't, it's, just, it's more of a preference. Some nights I feel that way, but we don't add any, you know, we don't use a lot of extra fat. So it's just the steak that comes on the, obviously the, the fat that's in the sardines that we use, um, we use lean ground beef now we used to use uh, regular but we are using lean because we i do like to add some butter in with the with the uh, our ghee and with the ground beef and um yeah regular is quite quite fatty it's, it's quite yeah. fatty and you just don't know is no you know because yeah. it's really up to the guy that's throwing it into the grinder and in, in the ratio and stuff so um we found the lean it's easier to um, work with, and we can add some things in with it. So we eat, we we do um, you know time restricted eating, and and we not intentionally, we like but that's just kind of happens with yeah. carnivore anyway. You know? We eat two meals a day. We we prefer you know we've tried a couple of things. We tried OMAD, but we like to eat two meals a day, and they're they're large meals. So I think it also depends on on the person and what they're eating. But like our steaks right. are, they take up their entire. Yeah, they're sixteen. Plate. They're huge. Yeah, they're 16, oh, 16, 17 ounce steaks, and then for lunch it's probably about um um anywhere from 10 to 12 ounces for lunch um and then with the eggs and stuff so yeah we're in a- yeah so we try and do for me it's probably like a pound to a pound and a half of meat and Dwayne's like a pound and yeah, a pound half, half. yeah it doesn't go up to two very often but probably around a pound and a half yeah okay uh patricia wants to know what's the de- desiccated liver supplement that you're taking what's the company um, uh, for this, I did found the cheapest one I could find on, on <laughs> Amazon, just so, because some of the, you know, cost is always an issue for a lot of the people that I work with and people assume that carnivore is expensive. We actually feel that we've lost a lot of, uh, sorry, we've actually feel like we've saved a lot of money so, by yeah. going carnivore. You know, we eat out so la- like so much less. Um, and you know, ground beef is very inexpensive. Eggs aren't expensive, you know, so we feel that we've we've saved a lot of money going this way, but um, I did want to use just uh you know I I just want to just thinking of if someone came to me and you know they wanted help with their diet, they didn't want to spend a lot of money and they said they weren't going to eat liver. This is probably the option they would go with. So I'm going to try that for a month and just see, and then I can say to them, you know what? Like I tried that option. What you know you really do want to learn to like liver or maybe not. We'll see. But so far I'm not you know seeing a huge difference. Um, but it was, I think it's, uh, it's over in the counter there. We do. I've tried, I've taken it before too. And I did, um, take ancestral supplements. They have a great, yeah, great liver. We live in Canada. So, uh, we have to think about, uh, duties. So we try and find, that's right. You guys in the States have a lot more, you know, there's a lot of those companies are popping up now and you have access to a lot more and you have access to great, you know, delivery by mail meat and stuff like that. Mm. But, um, you know, we don't have as many of those that are available in Canada at the moment. So anyway, like I say, this one here, this is a Tropic. Uh, the one I got off of Amazon was Tropic. And like Great. I said, I just wanted to try that one because it was the least expensive and the easiest one that I felt that, I, you know, if someone cost was an issue, I could, uh, I could refer someone to that one. And, you know, so we'll see after the month how I feel, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, last question here is from Bridget, who says her husband did carnivore for two weeks and he had major disaster pants, uh, aka <laughs> diarrhea, yeah. lots of stomach cramping and diarrhea. How could he have avoided this or helped him get through this detoxing phase? So, any tips on that? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. there's it. 
we find that people either it's one or the other. They either have disaster pants or they have constipation. Um, the great thing is magnesium helps with both. Um, right. It's great. Um, one of the things that could be causing the diarrhea is too much um, fat that is rendered. So people, some people have a lot of issue digesting rendered fats, especially because if they, you know, their stomach acid is, is a little low going into um, carnivore. And that's common because if you've had heartburn before, you know, the things you were prescribed like Nexium and these proton pump inhibitors, you know, have really knocked down your um, stomach acid. So you don't have, you know, so you need, um, there's um, digestive enzymes that have ox bile in them. Those mm -hmm. really help with digesting fat. Um, Adenine HCL is also important mm -hmm. too. If you So bring up the stomach. So you go, your goal is to bring up your stomach acid so that you're, you know, but so first, you know, limiting these fats. And so if you, you know, your body, um, if you have a lot of stored fat on it, that's fat too. So, you know, you, you, you can, you know, you can do this. Um, you know, I've had to like different times of, uh, you know, what we've, we've changed our ratios over time, but you know, I can get, I have to eat a little more fat now, but when I had a lot of body fat, you know, I didn't have to eat as much fat. You know, my body doesn't know the difference between the body, the fat that it, that was on the plate or the fat, you know, if I don't give it enough fat, it's going to get that fat. So That's right. If, if you're coming into the diet with a with a lot of diet with a lot of um, extra body fat, then you can do with a leaner version in the beginning, and that'll help. You know, cause like I say, it's it's still the fat. There's still going to be fat in the meat. It's not going to be a low fat by any means. You know, you definitely you know the, there is a ratio where if you go below it, you know, won't feel good. But that's you know, there's it's virtually almost impossible to do. You know, unless you're just eating chicken breast, which is not. You know something we recommend we recommend people sticking beef because it is the most nu nutrient dense and it's, it's a lot easier to get that as a clean source and you're not going to get you know super lean cuts of beef but just having not adding any fat with it so not adding any rendered fat along with it great advice comes yeah up. so there you go it's, it's have magnesium take ox bile as an option or hcl and or hcl and slow down with your fats and that should do it for if you have diarrhea and your, your body will adjust, your body is adaptable. And, and Dwayne's right. You can get your fat from your carnivore food or from your body fat. I want to um, acknowledge both of you two for, for sharing your story. I mean, incredible, incredible story with a spectacular results. This should really inspire people to give carnivore a go. And look, you could give carnivore a go for 30 days. Maybe you feel so good you want to go even longer. For me, I use it now as a tool in my toolbox. Like last week, for example, I did seven days. I just said, I'm going to do seven days of carnivore this week. So I'm going to keep doing variations of carnivore myself because I also feel great with it. But I want to encourage the Keto Camp uh, listeners and, and on YouTube and on the podcast to go check out your Instagram, which is at Our Infinite Health. And then let us know about your, your new podcast and then where are other places to check out some of your work? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having us on and your work is, is, is like I say, uh, it's been instrumental in my journey. So I really appreciate what you've done and all the time, you know, I think you put out more podcasts than anybody else. You know, I think you're, <laughs> you're, you did three a week, I think it's, uh, um, we just thank you. decided to do a podcast and so I have a new real appreciation for the three a week thing. Like we're trying to do one a week and, and it's, uh, it's so doing three a week, you know, that's good for you. And you've had amazing guests and you've done a great job. So I thank you for that. Thank so, you. Yeah, we, and you're one of the ones who inspired us to like say that the podcast have been so influential for me in my journey that we thought like, you know, this is a great way for us to kind of get out some of the knowledge that we've learned and, and have some of these guests on again, because I you mean, know, I've listened to, guests on people's shows multiple different times, but the different information comes out when they're interviewed by someone different, you know, and you, you get all these nuggets and plus they're everyone in this space is evolving a uh, daily, you know, we're, we're all learning more and more. So, you know, listening to an interview of someone a year ago could be, you know, slightly different or quite a bit different today, you know, cause we're all learning so much as we go. So, so we're really, you know, we're, we're excited to launch this podcast. We just got the two episodes up so far, which is, you know, Chrissy's story and my story, which you, you know, you heard today, maybe a little, a little more in depth there, but um, soon we're going to have some, some uh, guests on and Ben would love to have you on and, you know, mm -hmm. let's do it. And, uh, and uh, yeah. And then we just have our Instagram. That's where we're most active mm -hmm. and Christy does 
uh, all the posts there. I, but if you if you message, mm. you'll end up talking to me. I do yeah. the answering. She does. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Great so, teamwork. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have our website too, which has more resources on there too. Kind of more uh, specific. Um, other podcasts we recommend. Tons of research as well. Uh, and then a page of if anyone's interested, we get asked a lot about things that we like. So we have a list of all of our um, products and things that we use too. So that's uh, it. It's just ourinfinitehealth.com. And that's what our podcast is too called. It's called Our Infinite Health. There you go. I love it. It's, a, it's the same brand all across the mm. board. We'll put all the, the links and the resources down below. So if you're watching here on YouTube, Everything's down below. If you're listening here on the podcast, everything's in the notes. So go check them out. Go let them know. I, I encourage you listening on your phone right now to take a screenshot and let us know on Instagram that you're listening right now. So tag them over at, at Our Infinite Health and then tag me at the Benazadi and post it on as a post on your stories. Tag us and we'll share it and let us know that you're listening and then share this episode with a friend. Maybe you could inspire somebody who wants to do carnivore or somebody who's thinking about doing carnivore or they're doing carnivore, share it with them. And uh, Dwayne and Chrissy, thank you again. I am uh, grateful for your amazing share today. I appreciate it. I know the keto campers appreciate it and congrats on your new podcast and all the cool things that you're going to be doing in the future. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, I hope you got so much from that interview with Dwayne and Chrissy how amazing is their story? If you're inspired to give carnivore a shot, I want to share my personal carnivore story with you. I did it 40 days, like I spoke about on the episode, 40 days just eating nothing but animal fat and protein. And I did a whole bunch of lab work on day one and day 40. And I compared it all and I put it all together for you. And I also share what it did for my autoimmune Raynaud's. So if you want to watch that breakdown and see my experience with carnivore, I want you to click that video right there. Go right into it and be blown away again by the healing benefits of the carnivore diet. I'll see you in the next video.